Within the past couple of years, I have become very convinced that hell is a place that most people are going to enjoy. Most people out there, they want to go to hell. Okay, they might not believe in hell. You might not believe in hell. But I, I want to argue that hell is a place that most people actually want. They are not just headed there. They want to be there. It is the best thing that could possibly happen to them. And in fact, those of you who are atheists, you're going to be like, wow, we need something like hell. That sounds like a really good idea. Now, let me explain. Now, I'm not talking about hell is good because it, like, um, it punishes people I don't like. That's not what I'm talking about. Here's really what I'm talking about. There's a part of human psychology, and it's not in that all humans, but it's in many humans, the ones that need to be in hell, <laughs> that um, they want to suffer. Okay, there's like something, this is hard for me to explain, but let me give you just a minor example. I'll give you a couple examples. Um, now, in cryptocurrency, there are these people called no-coiners. All right, no-coiners. What's a no-coiner? Now, a no-coiner, some people define that as anyone who doesn't have Bitcoin. But really, the no-coiner identity is someone who doesn't have cryptocurrency and is extremely aggressive about it. Like, no, a no-coiner... Your characteristic, like your archetypical no-coiner would be someone who has known about Bitcoin since it was less than $10. And they, they hate the idea of it. They don't even really know how it works. Maybe they do. But they hate that people have gotten extremely rich on Bitcoin. They don't like anything that cryptocurrency does. They hate, well, it's not even like a reasoned argument. What I mean is there's a certain type of people, when they see something good, they just reflexively, they just hate it. They just, they, the something wells up inside of them. Maybe it's jealousy. Maybe it's, uh, I, like, I don't really know. I don't, I don't really know what goes, goes on in these people's head. But there are many people who see something great and good. And this isn't about Bitcoin, but just in general. There are many people who see something like that and they just, re they're repulsed by it. They hate that idea. And for them, it's very important to, to not, they don't like those kind of temptations. They don't like good things. They don't like having the choice of being able to decide between something good and bad. They like wallowing in despair. They like, uh, they don't just like being poor, but they want to make sure that everyone else who's not poor is suffering, right? You know, you know let's say taxes, Okay, like in America, like we don't really need taxes. Like, you know, we could finance everything with our debt anyway. We're going into debt anyway. So the government could just not have taxes and we'd be fine. But the reason that taxes exist is because there's a segment of the electorate who that is run by this kind of sadism. Like they have to see that they just... It's not just that they want to be poor. They want to see other people suffering. Like that is the important... That is a part of their psychology, okay? Um, and this is something that I realized in my life, like that these people exist, not just that they exist, they might even be a majority of people, frankly. Um, I realized this when I was in graduate school, okay, because um, I, I was around this new type of person, like your, your um, I guess your career grad student who's not really interested in what they're studying. They're not interested in academia. They, they don't want to be professors, right? Um, they are interested in, uh, well, first off, they're in grad school because that's like the path of least resistance. You know, you just keep going to school because you don't have anything else to do. Um, but, you know, these kind of people, every assignment they had, they liked wallowing in despair. They didn't actually want to accomplish things. They're, they're not driven by success. They're not driven by, you know, being proud of their work. They're driven by like this kind of sordid, uh, like self-pity that they really enjoy. They like it. And they like being able to complain. They like being able to complain to other people. They like suffering. They find enjoyment in suffering, okay? Now, all of this is to say that um, hell, what hell is, is it is a place where these people can suffer in peace. They no longer have to be taunted with people more successful than them. Because everyone is suffering in hell. They no longer have to be taunted with, should I have bought Bitcoin at $10? You know what I mean? Not, not exactly that, but you know what I mean? Should I make a good decision? 
uh, or you know, can I can I keep wallowing in despair? Right? It's a place where they have no responsibility. They have nothing. They have no choices. It's a place not just where they are separated from God, but the Platonic God in the sense that God is all goodness. Right? Um, it is a place of pure punishment and damnation, and that is exactly what I believe that most people really want. Most people, they don't, and this sounds absurd, like if you haven't been around these these types of people, uh, like if you're in a happy-go-lucky environment, you might be like, what is this guy talking about? But most people in the world, I really think they just like complaining and suffering and getting nothing done and blaming everyone but themselves. That is what they want. And that is what hell is. Hell, therefore, is not, it's wrong, honestly, I think it's wrong to think of hell as being even punishment. Hell is the best possible thing that can happen to this psychology of people. And it's what they're going to get. See, that, see, God is infinitely good, and he's going to give these people exactly what would be best for them. Okay? So that, that is why hell, that, that's hell. Okay? 